What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction with another epic collection review. A lot of the epics have been delayed with COVID lately. This is one of the most recent ones to come out, which is the Clone Wars Volume 3 in the Star Wars line. Um, and it, this covers Republic 68 through 73, the General Grievous miniseries 1 through 4, Free Comic Book Day 2006, Star Wars Obsession 1 through 5, and some material from some other stuff. Now, these are always kind of a mixed bag because they they collect these via era, and so you get like like lots of mini series and lots of different things, and it doesn't always flow together. But this volume actually flowed very well, and uh, it opens up with a really tough one, I'd say, a lot of background dialogue. So this entire issue really read like a um, like a telling, not showing. You always say show, don't tell. In, uh, in in comics. But this was telling, not showing for the most part. And the art's very nice. But the experiment of all this dialogue, uh, way to do things with this clone trooper going through and, and talking about things, um, really just didn't work out very well. Um, now, this does continue some stories from the last volume. So I would recommend reading at least volume two first, maybe even volume one, because it does set up a couple of these characters. But volume two especially like really develops these characters. This is Ayla, she is a, uh, a Jedi who appears uh, in a lot of these stories. And then this guy, Voss, who is, his backstory is he was sent to sort of uh, spy on Count Dooku, but he then kind of got corrupted to the dark side a little bit. And everybody's trying to figure out exactly where he's coming from and whether he's on their side or not. He's a bit of an enigma. And nobody's really sure whether he's a traitor or whether he's not. So that's his kind of storyline. It runs throughout the entire book. I love whoever this artist is. I didn't even look it up. It is Jan Dersema, who does most of the Republic stories in this. Just very nice figures all the way around. I don't usually love modern art, uh, but, but this Jan person does a very nice job. So there we go. That's that first issue. And then we get into a couple short stories from this Star Wars Visionaries, uh, which uh, we get a weird, weird little painted story. Uh, which, you know, what happens is I see lettering like this and it, it really, and it really distracts me. Um, I, d I don't like reading stories in this sort of realistic photojournalistic format. It really bothers me. Uh, but we get a little introduction to General Grievous and how he sort of came about. And then uh, we get a, uh, a Wookiee story, which is done in this, like, again, a little arty, uh, sort of overly pencil drawn. I don't even think they went to inks. Just went straight to color. They probably darkened it and went straight to color on this, but you kind of see a lot of the pencil lines on here. Sort of deal about a Wookiee prince and, and about what the how the Wookiees get involved in this war, really. Yeah, not for me. Then we get a General Grievous story proper, and this is written by Chuck Dixon, the legend, one of my favorite writers of all time, drawn by Rick Lenardi, and so we get a, a very cartoony, very comic-y sort of feel. And uh, the Jedi are going after General Grievous, and these Padawan are actually going out there, and they're gonna they're gonna try to off him against the Jedi's. Look at this beautiful double print, this page spread, good stuff. Uh, orders uh, in typical Chuck Dixon fashion. This is a high action deal, and uh, this was probably my favorite miniseries uh, in all of the Star Wars that I've read so far. It really was cool. It, it just super fast paced. You get a lot of twists and turns in it. I love the, the just really normal comic style art. It just felt good. Um, it, it really felt like a nice, it felt like a Star Wars cartoon. It felt like I could watch this as a Sunday, Saturday morning cartoon and enjoy this uh, as, a ba as, a, as a battle between Grievous and the others. And of course, Grievous escapes at the end. Uh, it just is what it is. So good stuff. We get back into the Star Wars Republic mainline. Uh, John John Ostrander writes most of that main line, and then Jan Jusema draws this again, which is uh, is good stuff. He's a lot wordier than Chuck Dixon, as you can see. <laughs> Sets up. There's a lot of setup. This is a this is a big exposition point, which was a little slow, but it starts this whole uh, this deal where Obi Wan gets in touch with this Voss guy, and uh, he brings him back to the Jedi. Meanwhile, there's this fleet uh, that's out there, and uh, they're being controlled by the Separatists, and Obi-Wan has to deal with that and fight with this uh, Ventress gal also. So uh, get, a, get a little Rancor storyline. So this this one really felt the most Star Wars-y to me because there was just so much random action and cool stuff going on. This cool Ventress little page where she's riding on top of the Rancor. Very cool. 
Um, awesome looking stuff. Uh, and I just plowed through this. This was so fun to read. Um, I've already talked about Jan's art. And this storyline was really good. It's a four-parter. And we really get deep into uh, that Voss guy's background. Whether he's on the team or not, we don't know. But And uh, they kind of lock him up when he gets back. And he comes back and he saves the day anyway. Beautiful cover right here. And uh, he starts his own storyline at this point, I think, where he goes down to Coruscant and he's trying to find, he's, he's really obsessed with finding the other Sith other than Count Dooku, because he knows there's another one out there. And so he, he gets in touch with this assassin and ends up uh, trying to figure out who that is and go after that person. So very fun stuff. And uh, he's got a girlfriend, even though Jedi aren't supposed to have a girlfriend. And uh, seems to be a trend in this. And Count Dooku's kind of manipulating things with uh, behind the scenes here. So uh, we find out, you know, he, d he doesn't find out who the Sith is. But uh, he is, uh, is, is doing his thing. And the Jedi start to trust him again at this point. But he's really got his own agenda. Very interesting. Very cool character development through that. We have Free Comic Book Day. This is by Randy Strandley and Douglas Wheatley. And this is just a random clone trooper thing where the clone troopers do a lot of action. It's just like, you know, not a ton of dialogue, and it's fine. Seems like a filler. And then we get to Obsession. Um, this is written by Hayden Blackman and drawn by Brian Ching. And Obi-Wan is obsessed. He thinks Ventress is still alive, uh, and he in, in those... Uh, issues uh anakin killed her in theory um and anakin's you know busy uh with padme doing his doing his padme thing and uh you know art's all right in this one i don't like it as much as jan's art i got used to it at this point um but basically they're infiltrating the black sun and trying to find this ventress person look at this this art's really nice uh this uh this uh drawing of naboo very cool doesn't it doesn't do much for the story it just sets naboo but uh, but it is very pretty to look at, so that's fine. So they end up going after people. They end up going to the Outer Rim, and uh, this this robot guy comes back and fights Obi-Wan. Turns out, you know, there's this whole conspiracy at this planet uh, where Dooku's there, and so is General Grievous, and they have a real knockdown dragout fight. Anakin crashes a spaceship. <laughs> um, very cool stuff. Super fast-paced, um, and Ventress is brought back to life in this, and it looks like they kill her again, and yet she somehow survives and escapes again, uh, and, and she kind of runs off on her own. She doesn't really want to work for Dooku anymore. And that really ends the main storyline for this book. Um, there's a couple more after this, but this is really where all the storylines have progressed with Vaz and Ventress and Obi-Wan and Anakin and the, the, the Clone War at this point, and Grievous really has, has come into his own uh, which, you know, ties into that uh, Revenge of the Sith for Episode 3. And that's where it really goes to. Then you get another arty story, right? Um, and it, again, this just doesn't feel like Star Wars, so it's tough. And this is a Jedi who's obsessed with take coming after some killer. And uh, again, this just doesn't feel Star Wars-y. It's like they shoehorn Star Wars into it. Star Wars into it. And, um, you know, it, it turns out maybe he's schizophrenic and creating his own problems yeah and this is a, another short called Watt Tambor and it's about these aliens again just done in this like kind of cartoony arty style which just doesn't feel like Star Wars to me and very trippy stuff maybe it'd be okay in an indie comic but uh it didn't really do much I guess there's one more episode of this and there's a final fate of him maybe we'll see it in the next volume don't know but that's it this is the Star Wars Clone Wars. Uh, this is probably, I mean, other than those shorts at the end and the shorts at the beginning that kind of didn't fit with the rest of the book, and I, I understand they have to collect everything, so they just put those in there. But uh, this is solid. Um, I read this very quickly. I enjoy the art all the way through. I really love the Chuck Dixon storyline. I actually really love the Obsession storyline also. Um, and so this was a lot of fun. It's probably the best Star Wars book I've read so far. I've read all three Clone Wars. The Rise of the Sith, which is the Phantom Menace era, uh, and I've read a couple of New Republic and a couple of the uh, Rebellion books, but this is my favorite I've read so far. This really developed the characters, made me care about all of them, 
Um, and so I highly recommend this. I'd say this is about an 8.5 overall, one of the better epics out there. Hit that like and subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed the review. I will be back later, guys, and we'll talk more epics. See you.